So just taking my IO expander. Who needs, who needs data? Um, electrical tape is not a harness loom. Does that make you nervous? Platinum Pro will help tremendously. No more hole going right to your feet, get some cold air or some rainwater. All right, guys. Well, last time I think we left you with Kenrick's R32. Um, it was going to John over at Dark Industries for some big, big fab work. Much needed fab work, I should say. And um, I believe he had a different bumper than he does now. Um, now we have the GTR bumper, which is, I really dig it. I think it looks cool. So all the fab stuff is done and ready to roll. Uh, so we have the intercooler piping, hot and cold side done, uh, the turbo inlet. Um, so we have the inlet going right up to the headlight inlet and um, that way you get nice cold air coming in. Um, we have a uh, catch can here, uh, dual 10 AM with the radium engineering fitting adapters on the valve cover. Um, help the engine breathe very nicely uh, with our nice little sleeper logo right there, mounted all nice. And then um, we have this uh, aluminum plate down here to kind of help clean up this area as the factory holes were kind of chopped up and you know damaged. So we put a cover plate uh, so it, you know, cleaned it up very nicely. And then, um... Oh, yeah, I guess you did one back there then, too, right? Yeah, yeah, so we got the, uh, got the cover plate covering up that hole for the factory Speedo cable. And, uh, since that's removed, so that's a little delete cover there. No more hole going right to your feet, get some cold air or some rain water. Because <laughs> you don't want neither of those. Oh. Um... No. So we got the intercooler all uh, mounted up and uh, the bumper trimmed to fit the intercooler nicely. So that uh, looks very good. And then um, we have the exhaust made from the ISR downpipe all the way to the Tomei muffler. Uh, three inch stainless. And um, yeah, I mean, everything lines up and fits very nicely and uh, looks very good. Yeah, it's coming together nicely. I'm excited for him because I feel like he has not seen his car in like this shape. You mean put put together in, in one piece or a car? <laughs> yeah, running, like, yeah, it's exciting, so. Yeah. Making some progress here. Uh, going to do all the engine management wiring and uh, keep it rolling. All right. Good deal. So... I'm going to get started on uh, doing the wiring for the engine management on Kenwick's car. Uh, just got it back from John over at Dark Industries to get all the fab stuff done and uh, everything came out great. Here we are. Um, I have a RB20 ECU pin out and a 26 ECU pin out. Um, I got my manuals and everything for everything that I'm going to install. And so essentially what I'm going to be doing is repurposing some of the factory stuff that we're not going to be using. Um, to do some of the stuff that we are going to be using. So, for example, um, the car is a GTS4, so it's got um, it's all-wheel drive, and so um, I have the RB26 firmware um, on the ECU. That way, the TPS output control works for the all-wheel drive system, and uh, because it's flashed with the RB26 firmware, I can then wire up um, intake air temp sensor in the factory RB26 position, um, because the RB20, of course, doesn't come with intake air temp sensor or uh, boost control. I get to wire in those two things into the factory RB26 positions on the Platinum Pro um, as if it was a stock ECU, because those outputs and inputs are designated um, on the Haltech Platinum Pro. So there's not a whole lot of room on the Platinum Pros for changing things around. Um, but in this case scenario, it works out well because I can wire up the intake air temp sensor circuit to, you know, the factory air temp sensor pin, pin 36. And then the boost control solenoid, I can wire that up to the factory boost solenoid uh, 
pin, which is pin 25. Um, that helps that. I still got a bunch of other things we're trying to do and wire up. So um, being that the car doesn't have the factory dash in it anymore, it's got the Haltech um, IC7 dash. Um, so uh, we have, we no longer have a speed signal. So he has a, um, a Hall effect sensor on the drive shaft and I'm going to attempt to wire that up into the factory speed sensor signal pin, um, see if I can get that to work. Um, ultimately, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to consolidate things um, and repurpose things as much as possible because the Haltech Platinum Pro is very limited. And the more uh, I can consolidate, then the more that frees up for other things in the future. So rather than just taking my IO expander and just you know wiring everything up here when I can repurpose things at the, at the Platinum Pro will help tremendously. Not only that, um, there's certain things you don't want to wire up to these expander boxes. You know anything that is kind of like a, a very important sensor that's going to be used for like say your uh, ignition timing calculation or fuel model calculation. Like example, a uh, fuel pressure sensor. I like to have that wired directly up to the ECU because that's going to directly affect the fuel calculation since we're going to scale everything across fuel pressure. Um, don't like to wire that up to the expander box as when you start you know, using the expander box, things can get slowed down or skewed or interpreted a little bit differently. We'll use this for some of the more less important things. For instance, say, okay, we're going to trigger our cooling fan um, relay with it or a flex fuel sensor um input because you know essentially um, once we get the signal fuel doesn't change unless you change the fuel in the car um, so that's not uh, you know something that's like super important that needs to get wired directly to the ecu oil pressure and oil temperature um, ideally i would like to have those wired to the ecu but you know we're very limited and being that oil pressure and oil temperature is not going to directly affect the, the tune or any of the calculations for fuel or anything like that. Um, mainly they're just going to be used to trigger a failsafe or protection. So that's okay to have them wired up here. I'm going to get going on that and uh, kind of lay everything out and figure out where I'm going to move things, what's going to be wired to where. And then once I get that figured out, then I'll start laying out my harness and figuring out okay where is it, everything is going to be wired how am i going to route everything and then kind of just uh move along from there yeah i mean it's you know it's like just second nature for you with all of this but i mean yeah. it's just you know just um, this was somebody this is the previous shop attempt at making a, a harness and i guess their version of making or wiring this up was to just run the wires bare and then wrap them up in electrical tape um, the entire way. Um, electrical tape is not a harness loom so you know it's very easy to kind of you know get cut through or start falling off because you know the stickiness goes away and stuff so not very ideal. Ideally you want to loom the harness. So, I mean this is the Hot Tech Platinum Pro plug-in auxiliary harness you can see they probably got the first two feet loomed for you because everything else after that is flying lead um, and you're supposed to wire it up yourself. Um, ideally, when you wire it up, then you would loom it and, you know, handle all that stuff. But uh, this was just a poor quality attempt at wiring up the manifold pressure sensor and speed signal and it was just horrible. Um, not only their attempt at using this, um, where they had it routed. Um, cause it was like right next to the drive shaft, right next to the steering column and then just getting, you know, pinched off on places and a lot of sharp edges involved in that. So not ideal. What's wrong? Well, cause all this electrical tape. Is... Why is the whole thing electrical taped? Well, because they decided that that would be a good way to lean the harness. Doesn't that make you nervous? Well, just so you gotta be careful. Hmm. Go in between the wires. You don't wanna cut any of the wires. Damn. They're such idiots. Mm -hmm. Don't do this. You'll regret it in the long run. Yep. This thing looks like one of those uh, low riders right now that like pop up. Hydraulics. Hydraulics, yeah. You looming? Yeah. 
And so right now I'm making the harness for the map sensor, the Bosch 2-in-1 pressure and temp sensor for all pressure and all temp. And then I'll move on to the flex rail sensor and the whole rest of the shebang. <laughs> I'm just a little tired. It's like, uh, what, 8 o'clock maybe? Maybe. Saturday, it's Saturday, right? Yep. Man, look at your hands. They're a little creepy. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, so I just finished making the auxiliary harness for the oil pressure, uh, oil temperature, fuel pressure, and map sensor. So this is the harness I put together. Um, we have the map sensor bolted right down here. Um, there's the fuel pressure, and then the Bosch 2-in-1 pressure and temp sensors under the inlet manifold. This I'll plug all in here. That'll go under there. This will come up around and plug into there. And that's uh, pretty much it for the first half of the harness. The next half will be doing the flex field. I got some modifications to do for the boost control and intake air temp. But uh, in the meantime, this portion is done. So I'll just get to installing it. Very nice. And then I'll just run this all the way around the back to the connection right over there inside of the fender. nicely and then, uh, yeah no it is it is tedious nice and clean though man nice work nice work not too shabby I'm we'll finished making the other harness and wrapping it all up then I'll tie it up and you know Fasten it all up and everything, so it's not just kind of ran and not tied up against anything. Um, but I mean, yeah, that pretty much sums that part portion up. And uh, I can keep going with the rest of the stuff. I gotta run the do the second half of the flex fuel sensor harness, which is this flex fuel sensor is underneath the intake, and that's too short because the Haltech harness was a little short on that end. Um, You're just gonna extend it. Yeah, yeah, I've made a connector and I'll extend it a couple feet to reach the sensor. And that'll sum that up. Fun stuff. It'll be good when it's all up though. You'll have all your data that you need and it'll be nice for you to tune. Yeah, yeah. Just who, needs, who needs data? <laughs> well, you won't be going in blind. <laughs> no, 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 which right. is good, so. That's true. I feel like when the last time, um, the last time Kenrick saw his car, it was what? Um, what was the status? Do we remember? Huh? Was it running? I think you got yeah, it running, yeah, right? He came up and dropped off the the car was running. Yeah, so okay. So he's seen it running, but he has not seen it with all the um, fab work done or heard it since then. And it really looks much different, really nice. Um, and then, uh, yeah, get this sucker going. So today, uh, Edgar's gonna take Kenrick's car and get an alignment. Looking pretty snazzy. We're excited. Uh, spoke with Kenrick, right? He knows what's up. I don't know that he'll be here for the tune, but do, do we know if he'll be here for the tune? Uh, I don't think so. Um, but that's okay because we'll video for him and um, maybe we'll get Miles to shine this bitch up because she a little crusters right now, a little dirt, a little deer tay. So what else has to be done then before the tune? Uh, the windshield, windshield. Oh yeah, and the windshield's going to get tomorrow pulled and resealed because it's, it just comes right out as you can see these lovely... That's it for now. And then um, Kendrick's been wanting a video because he's not local, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this ready for him. And um, I guess we'll 
just be back. 